believe, I really believe, if you want something, you can make it happen. Yeah. And money should not stop you <coughs> from doing what you want to do. It hasn't stopped me, or many of the women and men here, from doing what they want to do. So, and even if we find this around you, it's super inspirational. So, many of you may wonder, you know, I have this idea, I have this project, but, you know, how do I fund this? And the amazing part, especially now, everyone's talking about a crisis and you know, unemployment and all those things, but at the same time, it's not so much just about unemployment. Oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really about that will, right? So before I continue, I want to tell you about, more about myself. That's me. <laughs> and when I was young, I was super, super duper shy. But I was also very curious. And my mother always ingrained in me that if you do not like something, you, only you, have to change it. And it's something that always stuck with me. Like, what if I don't like something? So actually, one day, I was volunteering with the Children of Cancer Hospital in Egypt. And I saw the kids who were my age, even younger, suffering with this horrible disease, with parents who were struggling to fund them from very you know, low-income family. And I realized from being that shy, quiet girl that I wanted to and I had to make a difference. And from being that young girl, I started to have a voice. I started to ask people, you know, hey, you know, I'm raising funds for children with cancer. Give me some money. And I realized, OK, that works. Let me also organize bake sales and raffles. And by the time I finished high school, I was able to raise about $15,000 for children with cancer. I was only 17, so it was the first step. And that drive stuck with me for the rest of my life. And when I went to university, I also did the same thing with leading an organization called Isaac, both nationally as well as regionally around the Middle East, and launching programs to help and enable more youth in the Middle East to follow their passions and their dreams. So, what I'm going to share with you is a couple of stories of really fantastic, amazing, powerful women who persevered. And this is my friend, Dr. Ameni. Dr. Ameni, when she was 21 years old, she was a medical student. So she was studying, um, obviously, a doctor. And she heard the term medical supply company. And at 21, she didn't really know what that was, but she knew she wanted one. So what she ended up doing is she says, OK, let me register a company. And after registering the company and partnering with the university for space, she ended up realizing, OK, I have a company now, but I don't have a product. So obviously, I need a product. So she had a strategy. And her strategy was to partner with an international company, namely Siemens, to actually you know, be the representatives in Egypt. And obviously, the company was in, um, in Germ Germany. So she had to raise the funds. And she was 21 years old. Her father had passed away. She didn't have a lot of money, but she wanted to do this. So she went to Germany, and the guy was a bit skeptical. Well, you're just kind of 21. You're a little bit young for me to give you a product to sell in the market. Um, and what she ended up doing is she ended up asking her friends and family and getting the money and going to Germany. Uh, and then she's like, OK, so I have the passion. I have the drive. Money's not going to stop me from doing what I have to do. She ended up going back, convincing the guy. And what's amazing, from the 21-year-old girl that she was, now 20 years later, she owns a $200 million company and owns 20% of the market share. And she also leads many women initiatives to empower more and more women to do the same thing. Another friend of mine, Yasmin, Obviously, she's not me, right? Um, an amazing part of Yasmin is she was walking on the street, and a beggar came up to her and said, I need some money to pay for my school, son's school fees. And the money she was asking for was the equivalent of 25 euros. Many of you guys are saying, 25 euros. But the thing is, in Egypt, the discrepancy between the rich and the poor is humongous. So you have, for example, somebody going for a dinner, and someone's salary for like maybe one month is equivalent to the same amount of money. So she thought about it, and she ended up giving the woman the money. And she, after she left, she realized the problem isn't so much just that one lady, that there's thousands of them who are facing the same problem and the same struggle. So she was like, OK, you know, all of a sudden she had to make a difference. She realized that she, it was not fair for kids who were that young not to get an education. So she ended up, for the first couple of months, telling everyone, telling her friends, telling her family, and raising about 1,500 euros. And in the process, developing a project called Educate Me. And what she realized is it wasn't so much only the impact she could do then, but the impact was much bigger than that. So she ended up going and actually spamming every single social media network possible, like Lindsay mentioned. She spammed Yahoo groups, Facebook groups, couchsurfing, whatever she can get her hands on. And she realized it wasn't so much about getting an education. It was getting the right kind of education. So her and her team develop a project which is goal-oriented learning. 
And the thing about the goal-oriented learning is they were teaching kids from 6 to 12 years old that if you have a goal in mind, you know, instead of saying, let me give you the money, saying, okay, how are you going to fund it yourself? So all of a sudden, you have these kids sitting around in a circle like this and saying, okay, I want to learn taekwondo, I want to learn horseback riding. How much will it cost? Let's say it costs 1,000 pounds. All of a sudden, okay, how are you going to fund it? And the kids came up with super innovative ideas of actually how to get the money to do their projects and their, their goals. And the moral of the story is that even kids as young as six can figure out that if I have something in mind and I'm very clear about what I want, I can and I will make it happen. Now, Yasmin invested about 25 euros in one person. Now, 18 months later, she's been able to generate 100,000 euros. Now, that's a lot of money, right? We all agree on that. Um, so coming back to me and my story. So I finished university and I was graduating. And I may look happy, but actually I was in the worst time of my life. My father had cancer. Um, and he had been suffering for about a year and a half. And all of a sudden, I had lost that passion and the drive that I had. And I asked myself, what am I passionate about? Like, what is something that actually drives me to bits? And um, I didn't know. I forgot. All of a sudden, I was busy doing things, and I somehow got stuck in a year and a half of seeing him suffer that I forgot what it was that made me tick. So I had something that was very simple. I wrote a list down. I wrote a bucket list. I wrote a th list of things I wanted to do before I died. Sounds pretty simple. But what's amazing about that is just as simple as writing it down, you become clear in terms of what you actually enjoy and what you dream and what you want to do. And one of the goals that I had to do was to climb this mountain. It's a bit big. <laughs> um, and uh, doing a trip to train for this mountain, um, I ended up meeting my, uh, a partner of mine. And he was telling me a story about these four women who did this mountain bike race in the world's toughest mountain bike race in East Timor, one of the newest countries in the world, uh, to raise funds for a medical supply company uh, for children. And what happened was, it was inspirational. It was hard. It's 450 kilometers on terrible terrain. I can't even mountain bike. And I'm like, but I was thinking, if I can challenge my mind you know, and my body, it will also affect my soul. And that's something that was really important for me at the time. So we founded Gone Cycling. And we had just one vision. Oh, oh it's gone. <laughs> but we had a vision. Our vision was to inspire young people to make a difference. Most of the young people that I know were going to, you know, to get a job in the, in the corporate world, and they were forgetting what they wanted to do. So we wanted to challenge them from the body, but also the mind and soul, and to raise funds for women who were disempowered in East Timor, which is the poorest country in Southeast Asia. And it was hard. I'm not going to tell you that, but it's a different story. But what happened was we had a goal to raise $50,000 to empower 1,000 women in East Timor to enable them and to learn about running their own business. And what was incredible, everyone thought we were crazy, but we were like, OK, but we're going to do it anyway, because we were very clear on what we wanted to do. So this is me in the race. Uh, and the thing is, I wanted to ask you, and I just invite you to think about what, is, what would you do if money wasn't an object? Maybe some of you guys are saying, well, I want to be a painter or a dancer or a teacher or whatever it may be, you know? And what is it that actually stopped you from doing that? And so like, what happened to me is after all this, I went to university, right? Like a master's degree. Let's figure things out, you know? It's, this is just not the right thing for me right now. And what happened at university is just I realized it's not what I wanted. It was something that everyone said, if you're confused, get a master's degree. But a master's degree doesn't really solve anything if you're not sure what you want to be a master of. Um, so I ended up, through the process, discovering a thing called Islamic finance. Because I was really curious about money. I'm like, what is it about people saying, I have a stream, I have a goal, but I don't have any money to do it? It's just, it sounds, sounds dumb a little bit to me. Um, and that's what I did, actually. I was doing a so modern day social experiment where I pretty much launched a global competition where I asked a simple question. Have you launched or know someone who's launched a project with money that did not come from a bank. And my boss thought I was a bit crazy, but they all gave me the support to do that. And it was incredible, because after a couple of months, we were able to build a community of 10,000 people who were interested in actually hearing what we had to say. And we had numerous entries from all over the world, from, from Nepal to Saudi Arabia to Indonesia, all people sharing how they had launched a project from money, not from a bank. 
So obviously there were solutions out there, but why were people doing it? This is some of this, actually the entries that we had for the competition. So this is the situation in MENA, which is where I am from and where I'm passionate about. In the Middle East, right now, we have 30% unemployment, which means out of 10 people in this room, three of you have no jobs, right? And the thing about it is we have a population of 150 million people, and 75 million people are under 25. So by 2020, we're going to have 75 million people entering the workforce, which basically means that the three out of 10 is going to increase. We just don't know how, by how much. So if you had to answer this question, what would you do if money was not an object? Some of you guys may still be confused in terms of actually how to do it. So here's a little process. The first step is spark an idea. Challenge yourself. Get uncomfortable. Take a class. Something that you want to do. Anything it may be. And the second thing, like the story of Dr. Amani, plan a strategy. You know, have a roadmap in terms of what you're going to be doing and how you're going to get there. And afterwards, realize what's missing. If you don't have the skills to do something, there is Google. Google is incredible. <laughs> Ask Google. It will tell you the answer. It's fantastic. And then also realize your potential. Realize that whatever you are now doesn't mean who are you going to be. It's different than who you're end up going to be, right? The last thing is adventure. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. People will reject you. I promise you that. But enjoy it, because in the end, it's the experience. And the last thing is live with your tribe. What's incredible about this is sometimes we have these crazy ideas. And our friends think we're crazy, because it's normal, right? But if you live with people who are also crazy like you, you are normal. It is incredible. <laughs> so this is me. And what I'm trying to do now in terms of the, pro the problem in MENA is I'm writing a book. I'm sharing very powerful stories, just like Amani's and Yasmin and many other women who are making a difference and empowering and supporting and enabling more job opportunities for our region. So if you know a woman or have heard of a woman who is inspirational and very powerful, please get in touch. These are my details. Please contact me. And my last final remark for all of you guys to walk away with is just one thing. Start something. Start anything. It doesn't make a difference. If it means starting a hobby, taking a class, going for a run, meeting some new friends, just start anything. It could be the next project like W4 or some of the special projects that are around here right now. Thank you very much.